Hey guys, welcome back to the Mom Every Channel. And first of all, uh, today I want to talk about Bitcoin, but not necessarily the price or the sentiment or in terms of the market sentiment, market capitalization, but rather a different type of sentiment, uh, where it came from and, and what, how is that related to, there's a news article we're going to look at, how those two are related and how it's important uh, the way Satoshi Nakamoto did the way he did, the way he rolled out Bitcoin or um, so, okay, basically in this article, it, the title is The Last Days of Satoshi Nakamoto or Satoshi, uh, what happened when Bitcoin's creator disappeared. So this article is extremely long. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it starts off by, you know, this, this different speculations about who Satoshi Nakamoto was or is a woman, man, group of people, corporation uh, and different things about different people having all kinds of uh, attractions towards this mysterious character known as Satoshi Nakamoto. And though there was something intriguing about this article. So towards the end, like at the real end of the article, I'll post this. I'll post this article in the description of this video. So towards the end, there was this one of the gentlemen, uh, one of the people that Satoshi Nakamoto worked with really closely in the beginning, exchanging information, trying to ensure the viability of the network, um, you know, um, conducting those first transactions to make sure it works properly. And, you know, given the value preposition of the Bitcoin, of Bitcoin network and of Bitcoin itself, this thing had to, they had to make sure this thing was legit. So, um, so Gary Andreessen in, in, in the future, having um, conversations or being hosted by uh, the press, he would be asked a question by, by the press that we would like to know more about Bitcoin. And he would say, I mean, about Satoshi Nakamoto. And he would say, I would like to know more about him as well. You know, I would as well like to know more, to have more information about Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, why that's important is that uh, let's let's look into this next article. So the former Monero maintainer Fluffy Pony, I'm sure most of you know Fluffy Pony. So the guy really behind uh, Monero or maintaining the Monero uh, network, because I think the people that issued uh, Monero are also anonymous. So Fluffy Pony is one of the people that was maintaining the network. And we see this 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 article here, uh, former Monero maintainer Fluffy Pony arrested and to be extradited for non-crypto crimes. So apparently he was arrested in Tennessee. He's going to be taken back to South Africa. Apparently he channeled like $100,000 from a company you can see here, Spugni, that's his name, Ricardo Spugni, known online as Fluffy Ponies, accused of stealing approximately $100,000 from his former employer. Now, obviously, I'm not here to defend the guy. I don't know what he's been doing in his history or in his life, in his personal life. I don't know what grievances are between him and these people that are getting him sued, but we know uh, from from reading up that he was arrested by those those uh, major uh, it wasn't just the police it was those those three letter word uh, institutions that um, arrested him and are hence uh, wanting to extradite him back to South Africa so uh, so the reason why I'm trying to connect those two articles is Satoshi Nakamoto released such a controversial type of technology that uh, from the basic, from the ancestors of Bitcoin is to, to really democratize or to separate money and state, to, to have that separation between government and money, to put money, uh, money control beyond the fiscal and monetary policies of the governments and, and other things that are decided uh, upon the use case of money or where the value of money comes from uh, when it comes to those policies and uh, things like quantitative easing and whatever other private organizations do uh, whatever with fiat money. So the very essence of Bitcoin Bitcoin is obviously to sort of democratize, it's sort of a libertarian view, but uh, from the way Bitcoin has developed up to now, um, we will look later into cryptography as well. So the current state of Bitcoin is the largest cryptographic uh, development in the world. Uh, it's the largest public key infrastructure in the world. It's the largest security uh, honeypot in the world. It means uh, a lot of people attack the Bitcoin network, uh, but to no avail, all in vain. And uh, BTC is not secure because it's not attacked, but rather it's secure because it's attacked all the time. And the more it, uh, the more it's attacked, the more powerful it gets. So. I'm trying to connect those two things. So put two and two together. If, if Satoshi Nakamoto had exposed um, himself or themselves, um, we don't know what could have happened. And here we can see one of the greatest things that Satoshi Nakamoto did was disappear. So we can see this is in quotes and uh, at Jimmy Song. So uh, if those that have been in crypto space, you know, Jimmy Song is one of the, he's, he's known as a Bitcoin maximalist, but maybe he, he quoted this at some point uh, because uh, Bitcoin Magazine wrote this or quoted this and um, tagged him along. And um, 
One of the other things we want to look at that ties into this perfectly, actually, is the cypherpunks. You've all heard of the cypherpunks, this group that, that existed way back in the 90s. Uh, before Bitcoin, they're, they're really these sort of um, activists on the network, on the sort of geek geek activists using uh, or nerd activists using uh, programming and computer skills to, to, to put a very important message forth. So I just wanted to read the last part of this is the cypherpunks, the cypherpunks manifesto, which was a very famous reading. Uh, I'll also post it in the description. It was written on the 9th of March, 1993. So it's just, I'm going to read the first paragraph and then the last bit that's highlighted that you can see. Privacy is necessary for an open society in the electronic age privacy is not secrecy a private matter is something one doesn't want the whole world to know but a secret matter is something one doesn't want anybody to know privacy is the power to selectively reveal oneself to the world so in the last bit here they say uh, we must defend our own privacy if we expect to have any we must come together and create systems which allow anonymous transactions to take place remember this was written way before bitcoin people have been defending their own privacy for centuries with whispers darkness envelopes uh, closed doors security uh, secret handshakes and and couriers. So the technologies of the past do not allow the strong privacy, but electronic technologies do. We the cypherpunks are dedicated to building anonymous systems. We are defending our privacy with cryptography, with anonymous mail forwarding systems, uh, with digital, digital signatures, and with electronic money. Let me just skip over to the last part. So for privacy to be widespread, it must be part of a social contract. People must come together, deploy these systems for the common good, Privacy only extends so far as the cooperation of one's fellows in society. Uh, we, the cypherpunks, seek your questions and your concerns and hope we may engage you so that we do not deceive ourselves. We will not, however, be moved out of our course because some may disagree with our goals. The cypherpunks are actively engaged in making the networks safer for privacy. Let us proceed together apace, onward. And this was written by Eric Hughes. So... We can see some of the most respected people when it comes to cryptography, when it comes to, you know, the evolution of the Internet and a very big proponent of the idea of privacy or the, the idea of cryptography and privacy and people having that option, especially something that's accelerated with technology and now with the Internet uh, and now uh, with Bitcoin really enforcing some of these ideals that many people had. And uh, one of the most famous economists out there, um, he, he, he passed away. I can't, I can't remember his name right now, but he's famous for having said that the internet, uh, way back when the internet had just started, way before it was even a thing, a real thing, he, he, he said that um, w the one thing that's lacking on the internet is a reliable e-cash system that allows party A to transact between party B without party B knowing uh, who party A is and without party A knowing who party B is. So that trustlessness, that permissionlessness and the uh, idea of having security, that's so you can see how impactful Bitcoin was when it came out um, in 2000, when the first white paper, when Bitcoin was actually fully released in 2009 on January 3rd. So it was a very, very significant event. And the reason why I'm making this video is, is to just demonstrate how important this is. So the last part I want to look at is um, this, uh, this from this website here, I think brookings.edu, a brief history of US encryption policy. So I'm just going to cut out this section of this of this of this writing so the Nash, the nsa uh, i don't want to say the word announced the clipper chip in 1993 so the chip was a piece of hardware designed for phones which would provide encryption on communications while also producing um, an encryption key and making it available to the three-letter word organization after backlash from civil liberty groups finding a technical finding technical vulnerabilities in the cheap and low adoption rates despite incentives the program ended in 1996 so i think they wanted to put a chip in phones which is cryptographic but then they had a backdoor access to it so snowden you all know snowden so here we see snowden and and bull run so between the failure of the clipper chip and congress decision congress's decision to not address internet encryption in the digital uh, telephony act the status of the encryption in the u.s seemed settled so at the same time encryption had become more widespread and the nsa feared they would lose the ability to access those communication uh inevitably i keep saying the word but it's okay the three i mean i'm just reading an article um and the nsa feared 
they would lose the ability to access those communication communications as a result the agency began a secret program called buran to crack encryption standards so the idea the whole idea of, of, of reading out this particular portion of the article is that we see um the encryption was something that was kind of uh, feared uh, they didn't want it to sort of disseminate into the public they didn't want the public to really have access to this kind of thing you know people being able to encrypt their own technology and here we are we have bitcoin that came out um with the advent of you know satoshi nakamoto 2009 and this is a monetary system a system that is essentially an internet of money and not just money on top of the internet but at the same time it's something that could be programmed to do so many other things and where money is just the basic layer it's the thing that really attracts the people to it and and because it's permissionless it's secure it's decentralized it's uh, essentially permissionless it enables um, anyone across the globe to innovate any application on top of the bitcoin network to perform any kind of task they want anyone of any age can uh, create an application that can allow the transaction of funds of legitimate funds that cannot be that are the most cryptographically uh, ready funds that are that scalable from the from the get-go and can be used to transact globally or locally Locally or whatever so just to sort of emphasize on the impact of, of Bitcoin and what it brought that the cryptographic nature and what it signifies from controversy to libertarianism to to you know uh, separating money and 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 and, and government uh, to whatever it, it will uh, sort of evolve into as we see and of course of course not to to uh, forget the one of the main features that attracts most of the people or why this space is so hot the fact that uh, there will be a, um, a maximum supply of 21 million so which means it's uh, it's an algorithmically capped sort of uh, supply and um, deflationary tendency type of currency where the technology cannot be manipulated to change the very nature of Bitcoin in terms of how many are issued every four years the the, the supply of Bitcoin that are issued out to miners that stake electricity to to guarantee the security of the network um, every four years the Bitcoin that's issued out to those people is cut in half. And I think currently we're at 6.25, if I'm not mistaken, because the, there was a halving uh, that, was, that happened last year in 2020. So this video is essentially about sort of the, the grassroots of Bitcoin and to remind myself uh, really about why I'm in this space and why I'm here and why I talk about the things that I talk about and why I'm doing this. It's, it's, um, it's beyond just sort of looking at tokens and speculating on them. I know that's exciting. But it's also the uh, the idea of why we're all here, where it came from, where uh, to, because when we look at the past, we're able to best predict the future and where we're going to go. So, guys, that's that's all I wanted to talk about today. Um, uh, that I think that's quite important, at least in in really going back and understanding why we're here and why we're talking about these things. Guys, hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.